Welcome everyone to the second lecture of mine of this regional training on climate change adaptation project development. In this lecture, I will focus on impact chain analysis and theory of change, which are both very important parts of any kind of project um, proposal which you will develop in order to get a clearer understanding of the narrative of the project. And um, a little bit more into detail as well about the uh, TOC diagram and the linkages between the project outcomes, sub-outcomes and objectives. Why would you use an impact chain in the field of climate change? Um, simply put, it helps you to identify the core problem that a project addresses as you will map out the different climate change drivers which lead to different hazards, which lead to different impacts and also how you want to address these different impacts. So in some ways it helps you to develop the narrative and the logic for a pro uh, project. And it is very uh, important to uh, have the uh, a very clear narrative which focuses um, on few drivers, climate change impacts as possible, as it will be easier for you to approach uh, donor organizations to provide you with funding um, for these different projects. For example, um, as a very clear narrative which effectively worked for many uh, small island developing states uh, would be the mentioning of uh, sea level rise which leads to coastal inundation, which leads, uh, leads to them sinking under the water and uh, that's why they need additional finance uh, from the international community to cope with this climate change impact. That's like a very clear narrative, an easy impact chain you can imagine. And that's why like it's easier for them to approach different donor organizations and receive the funding. An impact chain or development of an impact chain can also help you to determine the additionality aspect of climate change. Additionality in this context uh, means that you got uh, certain areas or like hazards which are in certain areas already present since quite a long time. Uh, yeah, since quite a long time. For example, in the Philippines, uh, you got uh, seasonal cyclones. I think, if I'm not mistaken, 8 to 20 cyclones each year which are approaching the Philippines. And climate change is projected or like it's also partly observed by now that uh, climate change intensifies these uh, cyclones which are already in the region and which are already affecting um, the Philippines. So the question then is, okay, which kind of uh, this impact from the cyclone can you attribute rightfully to climate change? And what is like the baseline situation, like the baseline impact from cyclones annually in the Philippines, um, which are, is occurring there? And based on this distinction between the additionality of this climate change impact, some donor organizations will also request countries to provide a certain degree of co-finance which covers those areas which are related to normal development challenges or existing hazards in the region. Um, this also relates back to the um, need for justification of this uh, donor organizations that they utilized all their funds they're being provided with um, for climate change related impacts and uh, investments. That's why like you can see like the clearer you can link the project um, to a like, narrative and the additionality aspect of climate change, the more likely it is and easier it is for donor organizations as well as uh, to provide you with the finance. Um, if the impact chain development is used as a tool to as a participatory uh, process, uh, you can use it as a, a tool for creating a common understanding among the stakeholders involved, for example, civil society organizations, government representatives, as well as private sector um, stakeholders, above the uh, impact you are addressing with, as well as um, the project in itself. Um, this slide uh, showcases very simplified uh, climate change impacts or impact chains for climate change where you can see on the uh, left side or your right side, sorry, uh, a climate change driver, 
uh, through, for example, claim, uh, climate change or changing temperatures. Um, a hazard of heat stress and drought can be created, which can in some cases lead to crop failures. Another driver, driver would be changing rainfall patterns, which leads to flooding, which in some cases can disrupt value chains in a country. Another driver would be a changing storm regime, which leads to an intensification of uh, tropical cyclones, which then damages infrastructures. And I think it's very important to have this clear distinction between hazard driver and impact. As um, I mentioned before, like there are like different uh, climate hazards which are already existent in different uh, locations. And it's also too, uh, important to understand that not every hazard in, uh, in it, that, uh, inevitably leads to a uh, climate change impact. A tropical cyclone above the open ocean, which uh, does not hit any kind of social or natural system, for example, is a hazard, but it does not need uh, to lead to a, a negative impact in that sense. Some scholars also argue that uh, there is no such thing as a natural disaster because of this line of argumentation and thinking. Um, so defining an impact chain, I broke it down into four different uh, steps you need to do, which you can use as a guidance um, to develop your project idea a little bit further throughout this training. I know there are like uh, tons of different guidance on impact chains as well as theory of change. And I just want to bring you closer the, uh, to the basic idea of an impact chain and theory of change. Um, if there's, or like different guidelines uh, will provide you with different kind of terminology, with different kind of uh, aspects which you should consider, but I broke it down for you in four simple steps. The first step will be to define the core problem, which is being caused by a specific hazard or climate change hazards. In this case, uh, you can see the climate change drivers of increasing temperatures and less rain lead to the hazard of drought, which lead to the impact of freshwater or less freshwater availability in the location. Um, if we add another step, then like to create the narrative of the project, you would identify a potential solution adaptation option, which you want to address uh, which helps or which you want to use uh, to address the problem in the project. In this case, it would be um, harvesting rainwater and introducing uh, drought resilient crops to a community which is affected by um, having less fresh water available in that location. Uh, the third step would be uh, to consider the baseline situation to detect the additionality of the climate change. Uh, to the problem. So after you identified the core problem in, of the project, the main climate change hazards and uh, potential impacts, and you propose solutions, you will now go back and uh, see, okay, what kind of other like aspects do we need to consider to develop this project and clearly um, are able to say, okay, this is uh, the component of additionality from climate change. In this case, uh, the baseline situation, for example, for this community uh, could be that they're already experiencing two months of annual water stress in the location. And a use of water intensive crops is also being implemented. That means there is like a failure in the behavioral side of the humans through like using the um, wrong kind of crops for this situation that there is increasingly less fresh water there and you're already experiencing or they already experience because of the seasonality in that uh, location that they uh, have water stress already. In the next step you would uh, define the barriers to successful adaptation. Um, this is a very important step because it is also your justification of why this project is needed. Because if the community could cope with it in itself, like if, if they would identify, okay, what kind of solutions do we need or adaptation solutions to cope with this project, 
uh, problem, this uh, project would not be needed. In this case, um, as an example, I listed that there's a lack of awareness about climate change impacts and increasing uh, drought hazards. And there's a limited financial, um, or the community have limited financial resources at hand to um, implement new crops as well as new agricultural um, techniques to grow these crops, uh, crops. So you can see like in this uh, four simple steps, you already created a whole kind of uh, mapping of what is your problem what could be the potential solution and what are the barriers and additionally you also look at the baseline situation what is already there and what or what kind of hazard or like problems are there and intensifying this um, kind of dire situation for the community and what kind of climate change um, hazards or what what additional stress will climate change bring a more elaborated uh, example here I developed uh, in the last year was uh, for a risk assessment for Thailand's tourism uh, sector, um, which we use there as an example also in one presentation is um, the flood impact chain on the tourism industry, where you got a baseline situation uh, with many low-lying areas around Bangkok, a high population and visitor density, uh, development patterns that reduce the national floodplains because in the area of uh, Bangkok, for example, you got a lot of um, developments in natural floodplains, which also caused one of the uh, major floodings in 2011 or like helped to intensify this major flooding. And um, the rainfall depends on monsoon cycles where you got like uh, periods with intensive, very strong rainfall and uh, periods with uh, less precipitation. Then the climate change driver or climate driver, which um, makes the situation a little bit more um, intense or intensifies these uh, kind of stressors, uh, uh, that there's a changing rainfall patterns which lead to the hazards of flooding and riverbank erosion in uh, Thailand and the Chao Phraya River Basin. And this exposes the uh, traffic uh, infrastructure to these kind of hazards, the tourism facilities, water and energy supply, wastewater management, as well as the outdoor activities of tourists. And you can imagine like if there's a flooding like in 2011 occurring where like basically like 80% uh, of Bangkok has been underwater, that it's not a pleasant experience for tourists to be in the city. And the risk um, associated uh, are the interruption of uh, the transportation system, damages to the premises, which ultimately lead to um, profit losses, damage cost, or tourist discomfort. This was uh, this is another more elaborated example which we developed uh, jointly in the project team for like a climate change project in. Bangladesh in the coastal areas of Bangladesh where we focus on a region which is experiencing increasing levels of salinization processes of the soils as well as the groundwater and um, faces a dire situation like I was part of the core pro uh, project team who redeveloped the project and had the chance to dig into this narrative a little bit uh, more, more in, in depth. And you can see here um, that we mapped out a lot of different uh, baseline aspects. When you look only at the uh, development baseline here, I won't read out everything, but you can catch up later on this. Um, you have in the um, upstream situation like in the upstream countries of a lot of uh, rivers which go into this uh, basin in southeast um, uh, southwest Bangladesh a reduce water flow through dam, uh, dam construction and water extraction which is intensifying this situation that there's less fresh water available in the communities and on the national level you got um, precipitation um, patterns which are dependent on the monsoon cycle Cyclones are frequent phenomena, whereas we 
did not directly only focus on uh, cyclone as a climate change driver. Then on a coastal uh, context, the project area context, you got a lot of low-lying uh, coastal areas. Already a situation where there's low fresh um, water availability and quality due to arsenic um, in the groundwater lenses. And you got a slow onset salt water intrusion into the groundwater and soils and soil water or shallow waters. Um, then you also got the different socioeconomic aspects, which I won't read out, but you can um, look at this slide a little bit more, more in detail. And you can see as well, like with this more elaborated impact chain, we then like uh, focus on the uh, climate change drivers, uh, different hazards, what kind of impacts we focus on. I mean, like you can imagine there's like a tremendous amount of different S uh, impacts which stem from the, or come from these drivers and hazards. But even though it's this a more elaborated project, which was a total um, or had a total budget of around 34 million US dollar, which was approved as a project in the year 2018 is now under implementation. Um, we have like a very clear narrative, like for people like who are only seeing this slide and um, start to understand this idea of the impact chain, I think they would immediately grasp the basic idea or the narrative of the project. What kind of climate change driver we are focusing on, what kind of hazard this causes, what kind of impact we want to address and what kind of solutions we propose. As well as in the next step then, what kind of barriers are there, so why is this project needed? And uh, you can see already on the far right side, there is a TOC listed on the graph, which uh, indicates that after these barriers, or like this kind of uh, impact chain is already leading towards a series of change. Um, how this will connect, I will explain in the next section of the uh, presentation. And also we'll continue uh, using this um, Bangladesh, or this uh, GCF project in Bangladesh as an example. So you can continuously follow how um, this impact chain development and uh, the theory of change are effective tools in practice because we used it to um, obtain international donor finance for specific projects. Yes, so what is a theory of change? Um, theory of change, simply put, is um, an approach to mapping how and why a given intervention will lead to a specific change. Um, there are different definitions floating around, uh, different approaches, some um, literature on theory of change also uh, proposes to automatically include uh, different kind of monitoring systems, uh, for the different activities with specific outputs and deliverables. Um, it's again same as the, uh, with the impact chain. There are different approaches. I like in this lecture try to um, bring you closer to the basic idea, basic understanding of the concept of theory of change. And you can basically understand it as a, a roadmap for change or a summary of the interventions and outcomes uh, you want to have. Like, I would also in many cases say it's like a little bit of a, um, the heart of a project. Like in a sense that like if you got a project proposal document and there's a theory of change figure inside, that's normally the first thing I will draw through. Similar statements uh, were done last year by our colleague from GCF, uh, which was present during the last regional training who also said um, when he's reviewing any kind of project proposal, it's the first thing he does as well as going to the page uh, which displays a theory of change. Why that is, you will see um, during the next couple of minutes when I elaborate a little bit more on uh, the different components of the theory of change in perspective to the uh, theory of change model, which is often used by uh, Green Climate Fund uh, project proposals where you on one uh, page can see, okay, what is the intention of the project? What are the different activities and outcomes or sub outcomes? What kind of barriers will be addressed? And what kind of impact um, does this project try to address? 
So in some sense, what kind of change does it want to uh, trigger? Um, what are the benefits of using a theory of change? Um, as I mentioned, if it's a good theory of change, it can uh, show a clear narrative and a selling point of a project um, with one simple graphic or one simple uh, page uh, where you can easily like then use it to explain and elaborate to any kind of audience what this project is about and what you want to achieve with this project. It also allows you to uh, clearly formulate objectives, uh, outcomes, and the logic of the program, and uh, can create a common understanding among stakeholders. It can be used in a participative uh, way that you also engage a range of different uh, stakeholders to um, develop the theory of change in order to facilitate a dialogue and um, get different inputs from civil society organizations, people, from people or representatives from the private sector as well as government representatives. And it can in some cases also um, be used as a monitoring um, framework for the project achievements where you later can go back to and uh, look if the different outcomes have been achieved, uh, sub outcomes have been achieved or the overall impact of the project. Uh, these are a few uh, terminologies which are often used in relation to theory of change and uh, logical frameworks of uh, different project proposals. Um, different organizations use different terminologies uh, for different long-term impacts, uh, strategic impacts, etc. This is just one version to display it, but I think on this um, slide I can at least elaborate a little bit more uh, the basic ideas between behind the concepts and the different terminology. So basically put, it is a roadmap of change, what you're seeing in front of you. On the left side you see um, your planned work, on the right side your intended results. And um, with a project, you would normally provide some kind of resources or inputs. Uh, for example, for a project uh, focusing on farming communities uh, which are affected by a severe droughts, you could provide them with more drought resilient crops. Um, the next step would be the activity itself. So like the crops which you purchased, you will need to bring to the different farmers. Uh, so distribute the crops, which is the activity. And the next step, uh, you or on the next level, you got the output. So the output itself like uh, is just um, defining like how many farmers received a resilient crops. It's not necessarily like, um, like showcasing if uh, there's any kind of impact or an outcome being uh, achieved through the distribution of the crops. It's more that you can say, okay, X, Y, uh, for example, 1000 farmers were delivered with the crops. How they use the crops is not clear. So this one will be more defined in the um, next step of the outcomes where you can say X, Y farmers planted resilient crops and the impact of this uh, simplified logic for this project would be that you hope through the distribution of the crops, um, through the plantation of the crops, uh, the farmers will become more resilient to climate change. I hope this uh, slide gives you a little bit of an overview of the different terminology and different steps which are also reflected in the theory of change. As I mentioned before, like I want to um, provide you with real life examples of um, an impact chain, which I did before, as well as a theory of change. And for the theory of change, I will go back to the example of the uh, GCF project proposal from Bangladesh, where I had the pleasure to um, be in the team to redevelop the uh, project design and um, also developing the proposal itself, which was then successfully submitted to uh, GCF and which got approved in 2018. So the project title was Enhancing Adaptive Capacities of Coastal Communities, Especially Women, to Cope with Climate Change-Induced Salinity. 
as I mentioned before, it's uh, focused on a southwestern part of Bangladesh where uh, co yeah, coastal erosion processes happened as well as um, processes where like an um, inundation of salt water was increasing the salinity percentage or quota of um, salinity in the freshwater resources and the soils. And this project intended to review or support the uh, women in this community to cope with this uh, changing realities and become more climate change resilient. Um, I don't going to read out the rest of the details, but I hope you'll get a little bit of an understanding of what this project was about and uh, what uh, these women or the coastal communities, the beneficiaries of the uh, project um, will face as a consequence of climate change. Here you can see um, in the next couple of slides that I will use a, a framework for a theory of change which um, is often or which I used in a few um, project proposals which I helped developing in um, or for Bangladesh, or also reviewed quite a few other ones. And you can see here that uh, this one is also coming from the uh, Women Project in ba uh, Bangladesh, I meant uh, developed for UNDP and other stakeholders, of course. And uh, you can see here I simplified it. I didn't take all the different uh, details and aspects of the theory of change, but uh, broke it down into different components for you and also will not list all the details. Um, here you can see in the theory of change at the bottom, we got the problem uh, statement or the core problem as we defined it earlier in the impact chain, which in this uh, case was a deterioration of freshwater resources due to climate change induced salinity, threatening agricultural livelihoods and drinking water security of vulnerable coastal communities, especially women. And the whole project tried to have the objective or achieve uh, a strengthened adaptive capacities and reduced exposure to climate risk of vulnerable communities, especially women of Southwest Coast Bangladesh. And you can see here um, the problem statement relates to um, the different barriers or in a different uh, way to putting it, like the objective relates to the problems there, to the barriers of how these barriers can um, be overcome in order to achieve uh, like or address this uh, core problem. And the barriers here are lack of awareness and access to tools for resilient agricultural livelihoods, uh, limited skills and financial means to diversify resilient uh, livelihoods, on the left side in uh, the middle column or like boxes, you will see that they all relate to uh, water stresses which uh, these communities are facing. And the other boxes relate to institutional capacity building um, as a component. Uh, these are also the outcomes where you can see, okay, these outcomes are clearly linked to the different uh, boxes for one or the different barriers um, you can see below where you got um, in the as a first box and also for the first uh, outcome of the project to achieve a climate resilient livelihoods focusing on women for enhanced adaptive capacities of coastal agriculture communities the second outcome uh, was focusing on uh, climate resilient drinking water solutions and the last outcome focused on um, institutional capacities as well as better coordination between the different institutions involved. Here you can see example, examples of the uh, different sub-outcomes where in the first livelihood uh, box column under the outcome, the sub-outcome would be women are capacitated to diversify the, uh, to resilient livelihoods. And you can see, uh, clearly see that um, this as a diversification to resilient livelihoods directly relates to the barrier. So in some sense, the uh, outcomes and the sub-outcomes uh, are describing how you want to overcome the barriers 
in order to achieve the overall projective of the um, project. Uh, this one is a complete series of change. I think it's probably the second or third version. I think it's not the final version of the uh, project proposal document. Like it went through like a range of uh, different revisions, but I show you this um, first or second version of the theory of change for the uh, woman project in Bangladesh, because this version also clearly uh, links it back to the impact chain, uh, which we talked about earlier in this presentation or lecture. When you can see here at the bottom, there's a clear diversification uh, between the different climate change drivers, risk and impacts on which we focused or which we focused on in this project. And you can see here that it really like only related to uh, two different climate change drivers this project, which is sea level rise on the one side and an int intensification of cyclonic storms and surges, which then lead to the risk of salt water intrusion and rising salinity of uh, water and soils. So you can see here, even so there's a tremendous amount of other uh, potential drivers and risk factors and hazards um, the project could focus about, like because these uh, communities are not only for, uh, facing the severe situation with increasing sal uh, salinization, but also are exposed to longer dry periods, uh, which leads to seasonal drought, etc. pp. But to have a clearer narrative, like a better selling point for this project, it's good to break it down and really only focus on one or two, maybe three uh, climate change drivers and related climate change impacts. Uh, what you also can see here in the overall um, a figure of the theory of change for the woman project is that you do have the objective, same uh, objective which was stated earlier, which is the strengths and adaptive capacities, etc. But on the next level, you got also like one uh, box showcasing which kind of um, results areas from GCF will be addressed through this project. And on the right hand side, you um, can see here in this figure um, the different uh, baseline situations which is here in a box uh, shown as uh, context or geographical contextual factual fact uh, facts which influence the um, whole project. So you can see here like it looks a little bit overwhelming at the first sight but as if you start to understand the different structure of the theory of change like anybody like could come to this uh, kind of figure and understand what this project is about, what the narrative is, but also what kind of change um, the project intends to achieve through the different interventions. Another example of a theory of change is from a um, GCF NAP readiness project uh, where I was also severely or like very much involved in developing uh, the different formulations and different activities of this project. This is uh, from a GCF proposal from Thailand, uh, which is currently in the latest or last stage of the uh, review process from GCF. And UNDP and the government of Thailand are expecting to start the implementation of this project this year. Here you can see the uh, similar structure as uh, in the example with the different boxes I showed case before. And if somebody who is new to this project uh, reviews this uh, project um, proposal document, they could immediately go back first to the problem statement, understand, okay, what is the situation? What is the core problem this project wants to address? In this case, there's a limited emphasis on synergetic climate risk informed marine and coastal area development in the draft NAP. NAP stands for National Adaptation Plan of uh, the government, as well as in the existing planning, budgeting, and implementation process. So you can see here, okay, this project does not um, only uh, focus on one climate change driver or any kind of uh, specific driver, but 
it is a different kind of project which focuses on adaptation planning. And it identifies in the national adaptation plan process of Thailand, there is a gap, there's a problem existent because um, the climate risk and from marine and coastal area development is uh, not yet given sufficient attention. So that's a core problem this project is addressing. And then you could uh, go on the next step after understanding what is the um, more uh, main problem, the core problem of the project, to go with the view a, a little bit up and look at the objective. See, okay, what kind of, uh, or what is the objective? How do you want to address this problem? In this case, integration of climate change adaptation into marine and coastal area planning and budgeting processes. Then you would uh, probably have this aha moment where you think, okay, yeah, I know, I know what the project is about. So then you could go a little bit more into detail and have a look at the different outcomes. Three outcomes in this case, uh, which are enhancing capacity and knowledge, and knowledge to enable climate risk informed marine and coastal area development planning, uh, strengthening existing NAP implementation and mainstream adaptation in uh, planning and budgeting in coastal marine areas, as well as financing strategies. Afterwards, you could uh, go and dig a little bit more into de uh, detail and look at the different sub outcomes as well as kind of um, how these sub outcomes relate to specific um, barriers. I really hope that uh, this elaboration on the theory of change uh, provided you a, with a little bit of an understanding of uh, what the concept is about and how it can be used to um, yeah, effectively and condensed uh, give like a snapshot of the project on a, in a single graphic, but also provide you with a clear understanding and clearly defined narrative of what kind of change you want to achieve uh, through this uh, project and what kind of core problem you want to address. Thank you very much for your attention.